Good day and welcome to Lynn Farrell Arena. My name is Kirk Orniff and alongside me is Alan Hamill for this GPAC men's basketball action between the Briarcliff University Chargers and the Hastings College Broncos where Alan, we've got a couple teams who are uh, doing pretty well on in their uh, last most recent games. Yeah, both teams are coming off of victories. Briarcliff just beat Concordia a few days ago. Uh, at home, 75 to 68 was the score of that game. And then Hastings coming off a win over Nebraska Wesleyan. They traveled to Lincoln for that game and won by a final score of 64 to 58. Pretty yeah. close game there, but able to come out with a victory. And as you can see on your screen, it's 32 to 27 at halftime, and then 32 31 in the second half. So a very evenly matched game. And that one is Brady Lawman led the Broncos with 16 points, nine rebounds, and Dane Bacon was next on the team with 14 points uh, for the. Nebraska Wesleyan Prairie Wolves, Trevor Johnson led the team with 13 points. And one thing I found interesting was that Andrew Mat Matisse, uh, he was their leading rebounder. He had eight rebounds. However, he was 0 for 4 from the floor, did not attempt a free throw, and had zero points as the starting center for this Nebraska Wesleyan team. Yeah, just unable to get the ball into him for some reason. Just doing a good job of covering him zero points that's something you definitely don't want to see with one of your key inside players yeah and the uh, largest lead that was held in the game was by Nebraska Wesleyan where they only had three a three point lead middle of the first half of that one uh, and then Hastings College they led by 11 at one point in the second half so very a close game on that one but now we look back to Briar Cliff in their last get game against the morning's uh, against the Concordia Bulldogs, where Briar Cliff got out to an early lead against the Bulldogs, and they did not look back at all in that one as uh, Briar Cliff led 41-31 at halftime. And the second half, Concordia outscored Briar Cliff by three points, but it didn't really matter because, you know, a 10-point lead at halftime, so they just cruised to the victory in that one. And we should have a graphic for you on that game as well as uh, Briar Cliff did a good job of leading most of that game. And uh, um, Taylor Merton, Murren was uh, one of the key points getters for the uh, Briar Cliff Chargers in that matchup. But uh, now we go back a couple, couple uh, weeks, maybe a couple months, maybe a full year. How about we go back to the last time that Hastings College and Briar Cliff met up. That one was on January 21st of this year where Briar Cliff, they got out early and they did not look back now. And as it was 41 to 22 in the first half, Hastings College actually outscored the Chargers 36 33 in the second half. But uh, when you get down by 19 after after one half, you're just not going to come back from that one. Yeah, definitely a slow first half. Not how you want to start out against the team like Briar Cliff. You know, getting down by almost 20 points, that's just digging yourself in too deep. And, you know, a good second half, but like you mentioned, once you get down by that much, it's very hard to come back. And Taylor Murren in that game had 19 points and was 6 of 8 from the floor. Only one shot inside the arc as he was 5 for 7 from three-point line. Uh, Shipley, he uh, had 11 points that game. Brady Lallman led the Broncos with 16 points and Tobin Reinwald had eight points who uh, will not again be playing for the Hastings College Broncos. He is out with a torn ACL out for the season. No, you're not. And then uh, looking at uh, the at GPAC standings in here as uh, Doan currently leads. They're four and one in conference. They will be playing the Morningside Mustangs in Crete. Uh, Morningside, it is a battle of one versus two in that matchup as uh, Doan's four and one, Morningside's three and one. Northwestern is third, they're at four and two. Hastings College and Dort and Briar Cliff are all tied at three and two in the conference. Concordia and Midland are two and three. Mount Marty and Dakota Wesleyan is one and three. And Nebraska Wesleyan is 0 and four. They wrap out the bottom of the conference. Some good matchups here today as uh, Briar, this one, Briar Cliff, number 25 in the country uh, against Hastings College, who is receiving votes nationally, uh, shaping up to be the GPAC game of the week. Uh, Dort and Nebraska Wesleyan 
Uh, Mount Marty is traveling to Fremont to play the Midland Warriors. Dakota Wesleyan is playing the Concordia Bulldogs. Like we mentioned, Morningside and Doan, the number one and two teams in the conference, are squaring off in Crete. And Dakota State and Northwestern are going to go at it in Orange City, Iowa. So, uh, Alan, now that we've seen what's going on the rest of the conference, let's look at this conference. Who are we watching in this ball game for the Brackliff Chargers? Well, one of the key players is going to be uh, Shipley for Briar Cliff. He's their leading point scorer, averaging nearly 18 points a game. Uh, also going to look at uh, Murren for Briar Cliff. He's another guy that scoring about 11 points a game. He's got 12 steals, which leads Briar Cliff. And he also has 37 rebounds on the season. And looking at the ball for Hastings College, we are going to zone in. Actually, uh, going to give you a surprise player here for our star watch for the Hastings College Broncos. As we're going to go with Zach Lena. He is only, it's only going to be his second start of the season, but he's doing a very good job as a junior guard from Omaha, Nebraska. He's averaging about nine and a half points, but like we mentioned, he's only come off. He's only started one game, so a lot of that has been coming off of the bench for the Broncos. He's uh, averaging five and almost six rebounds per game. Uh, he's got 13 steals, five assists, and only 19 turnovers on the season, shooting almost 70%. All of that coming off the bench. Uh, along with him is Dylan Flynn. They both have been coming off the bench, doing a good job of supporting the Broncos here, and uh, they are both going to be rewarded with getting starts in this ballgame. It's definitely great to see players like that come off the bench and contribute so much to this team. And the coach... Coach Creech is going to reward them for their great work today with getting starts in this game. Yeah, those two bench players averaging over 20 points per game. So a great job there for those two players getting their second and first starts of the game. But look at the, some of the keys to this ball game here that we have to look at is uh, for Hastings College, you got to keep it outside. And that's both offensively and defensively. Hastings College doing a great job this season shooting 41.4%. Of the people that have shot more than 10 three-pointers, you've got Lawman shooting 47%, Dane Bacon shooting 41%, You've got Jake Marvin shooting 37.5%. Jake Hamburger shooting 35%. Carson Blum, who will also be getting a start here today, shooting 53%. So a good bunch of numbers for Hastings College offensively. But then you got to look also defensively at Briar Cliff. Briar Cliff is not shooting very well outside the three-point arc. They are shooting just 34.6% from three-point range. Uh, number two, you got to look at the Chargers free throw game. Briar Cliff is averaging 26 free throws a game, and they're shooting 69% from the charity stripe, whereas Hastings College, on the other hand, defensively, they're only giving up 16 and a half free throws per game. So if they can keep Briar Cliff down, they're going to be able to control the points that the Chargers win and win the first half. Both of these teams are second half teams. Looking at the uh, total score by half, Briar Cliff is averaging 36 points per first half, 432 points in the season. And then Hastings College, actually more than that, with 443 total first half points. That's 37 points in the first half per game. Second half, though, is another story where at Hastings College averaging 485 total second half points. That's 41 per half. And Briar Cliff is averaging 44 a half with 528. So I think the team that wins this first half is going to take home the victory. Yeah, and we saw in last season's game, the last game these two teams played against each other, Briar Cliff got out to a big lead in the first half, 19 point lead at halftime, and just cruised in the second half. All right, so now it is time for the starting lineups for these two teams, starting with the visiting Briar Cliff Chargers. They've got Taylor Murren. He is a 6'1 senior guard from Wahoo, Nebraska. Uh, John Engler, you just saw walking out there, he's a 6'6 senior forward from Fort Dodge, Iowa. Next on the uh, Chargers roster is Turner Fahey. He is a six foot sophomore guard from Grand Island, so just up Highway two, uh, 281 there. Jake Shipley is a 6'8 senior guard from State Center, Iowa. He is uh, the team's leading scorer on the ball game. And then Michael Collison, a 6'10 senior from Iowa Falls, Iowa. Definitely some big players here that Hastings College is going to have to uh, try to defend against. Yeah, Briarcliff definitely has quite a bit of height on their team. 
So now we'll see if the, uh, the smaller but quicker Hastings College Broncos, what they can do about it as uh, they're starting five, like we mentioned a little bit here in the pregame, is a little different than usual uh, as they're announcing the starters right now. A fairly good crowd here at uh, Lynn Farrell Arena. And so the first starter who we mentioned, Zach Lena. He is a 6'4 sophomore from Omaha, Nebraska, averaging almost 10 points per game. Next up for the Hastings College Broncos is going to be Dylan Flynn, who we also mentioned, averaging almost 12 points per game coming off the bench. So a good job there by those two bench players. You also have Carson Blum, who is a 5'10 freshman from Minden, Nebraska. Brady Lallman, who is, was the star of this team after Tobin Reinwald went down. And then Dane Bacon, the 6'2 senior from Kearney, will wrap up the final five for the Hastings College Broncos. So, Alan, do you got any final thoughts here before we, uh, before we tip the ball off? Well, this is definitely, on paper, going to be a pretty good matchup. You have Briarcliff coming in here, ranked number 25. The Hastings Broncos just outside the top 25. They're receiving votes in the latest NAIA poll. And also, this is a big game within the GPAC. We see every team in the GPAC has at least one loss in conference play. So I think that the, the standings could get shaken up today. And Hastings College defeated the number one team in the conference, Doan. Uh, college back on last Wednesday uh, with a nice 80 to 73 victory in that one. So we'll see what's going on here. But we've got our our ball game is underway as uh, Briar Cliff controlling the tip. And that one they're going to get it up to Taylor Murren. He's going to look for Shipley. Shipley, the leading scorer for this Briar Cliff team. Ball's going to be given to John Engler. That's going to hit off the iron and be rebounded by Lena. He'll give it to Flynn before he falls onto the ground. And now Blum will be taking this one for the Broncos. Gives it to Bacon. Bacon's going to control the offense, uh, tell everybody where exactly he wants them at here as, uh, before they start. So Lawman's going to get to Lena. Lena's going to go for Flynn, but that one is going to be kicked away by the Briarcliff Chargers, and they're going to take it right back. Turner Fahey's going to drive for the Chargers now. Going to get it for Collison, who gets it back to Fahey. Fahey guarded closely by Blum and Lena. Going to get it to Collison again. And the pass inside by John Engler. So they're going to get it to Taylor Murn, and Taylor Murn, our star watch for the Briarcliff Chargers, is going to get the first basket of this ball game, and the Chargers have a two to nothing lead. Nice fadeaway jumper on that one to give the Bron or the Chargers the two nothing advantage. We'll see how that affects our third and final most important key to the game: the win the first half. The team that scores first usually controls it, and that ball is thrown away. That's going to be intercepted by Jake Shipley for the Chargers. Shipley with seven steals on the season. That one is uh, now number eight off the turnover by the Hastings College Broncos. So Engler being guarded by Lena is going to give it to Jake Shipley. Shipley looking for a way to drive, going to go to the left side and is going to put up a jump shot. And that's going to be off the front iron and Lawman with the rebound on that one. They're going to go the other way as Carson Blum now has it. Blum going to drive to the inside. He's going to be uh, run into by his own player, stopping his momentum, so he's got to stop it. Get it outside for Lallman. Lallman inside for Lena. Lena's looking for something. He's going to get find Dane Bacon out in the corner for three-pointer, and he's going to put that one in. Hastings College is now on the board and has an early 3-2 to two lead here in this ballgame. And as we mentioned in the pregame, outside shots for the Broncos. going to be big as Briar Cliff tacks on a three-pointer of their own, number 23 on that one. That was Turner Fahey on the three-pointer. So now five to three here. This should be a high scoring ball game as coming into this game, Briarcliff averaging 81.9 points per game. So basically 82 points per game. And Hastings College averaging just over 77 points per game. So we will see exactly how high scoring this ball game can be. Now Lena's gonna put up a long range jumper, but that's gonna be off the iron and rebounded by Taylor, Taylor Murren. Merlin gonna give it next to him for John Engler. Who's going to go for Turner Fahey. Fahey looking for somebody, finds Engler out top, thought about it, but he's going to get it inside for Collison, and Michael Collison is going to get the basket there for the Chargers, and they now hold a 7-3 lead. Now Lena going to go near side for Lawman. Lawman going to drive, going to the paint, put up a layup. That's going to be no good, and Jake Shipley with the rebound there. Just tried to drive it in and didn't quite get the roll on that one as it rolled off the front of the rim. 
and no good. Yeah, Shipley is averaging five rebounds per game, getting that one there. And this is going to be Fahey putting up a three-pointer, but that's going to be no good. Rebound goes to Dylan Flynn and the Hastings College Broncos. Now Blum is going to go to Brady Lallman in the far corner. Who's going to go for Bacon? Swinging it around to Lena. Going to go back for Carson Blum, who's going to put up one from the near corner. And that's going to be no good. Rebound going to Briarcliff. It's a good ball moving by the Hastings College Broncos, but not going to get anything. And then the loose ball is good. They're going to say that was off the hands of Lena and out of bounds. And we're now going to see our first substitutions of the ball game. We're going to see Jake Marvin come in for the Broncos. And we are going to see Zach Odding and Ricky Torres come in for the visiting Chargers. So Fahey will be the one throwing it in. He's going to throw it to Odding just into the ball game. Shipley now going to go for Torres. Torres being guarded by Marvin. And this one's going to be up and no good there. Good defense by Jake Marvin as he gets the rebound. Now they're going to advance the ball up for Dane Bacon with a little head fake. And his pass for Lena is going to be off the hands. I believe that was John Engler who tipped that ball out of bounds. So the Broncos are going to retain possession down under the basket. Be interesting to see how they try and set up this inbounds play. They're going to go long. And a smart play there by Lena instead of trying to catch it and have to stop quickly, just let it go over the uh, half court line and then pick it up where you've got as much time as you want. But then the ball is going to be bounced around as Carson Blum and Ricky Torres were right there, but they're going to stay off of Torres and out of bounds as uh, neither one of them could just get a, a grip on the ball. So Brady Lallman inbounds it to Lena, who's going to get it back for Lallman. Setting up the offense here, gives it to Carson Blum. Going to get a screen from Marvin. Marvin going to get off that screen, put up a three-pointer, and he got that one there as Hastings College with another three-point basket. And it is now a 7-6 to six ball game as uh, Hastings College not doing much inside, but like we talked about the three-point game, they're going to get another three-pointer. And Jake Marvin slamming one right down in the face of Turner Fahey going for the layup. A nice move there. Marvin having a couple of good plays in a row that outside three, don't really see that from a inside post type player, but he's able to drain that one and then get the nice block to knock the ball out of bounds. And we're gonna see subs for both teams come in as we got Alex Thayer coming in for the Broncos and Austin Homan coming in for the Briarcliff Chargers, but they're gonna call a foul on that one. So the Chargers are gonna keep the ball. That was the uh, first foul of the ball game. That one was on Jake Marvin. The senior from Lincoln, Nebraska. This ball's gonna be inbound and out of Otting. And if you're gonna be surrounded by three Broncos defenders and taken away, Brady Lallman has the ball, now gonna give it to Dame Bacon, gets it inside to Marvin, and Marvin's gonna fumble it, but they are gonna call a foul on that one, I believe. Otting is the... Uh... I believe it was just tipped out of bounds. I don't you're, believe you're gonna, there's gonna... a foul okay. on that. But we're going to see Lena come out of the ball game, and Brett Wells will come in as the ball's going to be put up. And Bacon does a good job getting the rebound. Marvin thought about going to Lallman and said he's going to go to Dave, uh, Alex Thayer. Lallman now going to have it. Gets it up top near side for Dane Bacon. Far side for Alex Thayer. Going to dribble, looking for a way to get inside. Goes to Lallman. Now back to Thayer. Thayer drives. Thought maybe he traveled on that one, but he's going to get it to Marvin, who's not going to get his jump shot, but Alex Thayer with the offensive board. Barcliff not doing a very good job of getting the rebounds. We've seen the Broncos have a couple of second chance opportunities so far. And a nice tip in there as that was Brent Wells getting the ball off of the jump shot by Jake Marvin. Did not go. I guess that was a layup, spin around layup for Marvin, but... Either way, it's a nice uh, little putback basket there for Brett Wells. His first points of the game. Broncos have the lead now, 8-7. And Briarcliff, after starting off the game, putting up some points, they've kind of cooled down here in the past couple minutes. Ball's now going to be got out to Turner Fahey, and that was going to be off the iron. No good, and he's going to get his own rebound off the hands of the Broncos, and they're going to get it into Austin Holman, who's going to put that one in. So now another lead change here in this ballgame. That is the fourth lead change already of this game. Now the ball's going to be thrown up for Lallman, and Brady Lallman going to put that one in. I guess that one was a long-range two-pointer as he was on the line. But another lead change. That's number five already. And the Broncos with a 10-9 lead now. So 
So they're going to call the uh, foul on Brady Lawman. That's his first of the ball game. And now we are going to see. I'm going to. Alan, before I say it, I'm going to have fun with this today. We're going to see Hamburger come in for Bacon as uh, the substitution on that one. And also, we've got uh, Briar Cliff players coming in as well as uh, Briar Cliff has the ball now. Taylor Murray. Hastings trying to set up a trap. Almost got it to work. Yeah, that was Murren who was in that trap. Does a good job of getting it out. And they're going to call a travel on Zach Odding as uh, they went for a second trap and that time got it to work. Good defense here by the Hastings College Broncos. Yeah, he saw Jake Marvin standing right in his way and just tried to pull up and ended up traveling the ball. So now uh, Hamburger is going to get it in for Marvin, and Marvin puts it up and is going to get that one to go. Jake Marvin with another basket. He's got five already in this ballgame. Hastings College extends their lead to three points. And so the pass was going to go in for Ricky Torres. And that one's taken away by Wells. And then the ball is going to roll, and they're going to say Briar Cliff ball as uh, Brett Wells was letting it roll out of bounds, thought it was off of Briar Cliff, and apparently it was off of Wells, so ball will go to the Chargers. Very fast-paced game as uh, already we've had over seven minutes of this ball game go by already. Torres now on Marvin. He's going to put up a shot, and it's not going to go in the second foul of the ball game on Jake Marvin. And it looks like they're going to bring in Dylan Flynn, probably for Jake Marvin with those two fouls. Yeah, and those two fouls have come rather quickly on Marvin. Doing a good job, though. He's the leading scorer in this ball game so far. So Ricky Torres, first free throw is up and good for the Chargers. They are now in double digits here as it is 12 to 10. Ricky Torres on the season. He is a 56.1% free throw shooter, and he misses there. So staying right around his average of 50% on those two attempts. L Lallman now going to take it inside. Does a nice move and gets a long-range jumper to go. There is Brady Lallman now has four in this ballgame. And the Broncos extend their lead to four points. A nice spin move on the outside, getting past the defender and able to get a pull-up jumper. And Taylor Murren gets a pull-up jumper and is not going to get it to go as it bounced in and out. And Allen, you weren't here in the days of Eric Stites and Preston Peterson, but they talked a lot about the friendly rims of Lynn Farrell Arena. That one, not so much. <laughs> so uh, Alex Thayer is going to take the ball, gets it to Flynn. Flynn with a nice move inside to Hamburger, and they're going to call a blocking foul on Zach Odding. So that will be a couple free throws for Jake Hamburger. Hamburger shooting 74% free throws on the season. Yeah, he is 14 for 19 on that one. And so his first free throw is up, and it is going to bounce in and out on that one. We're going to see a couple subs come in. Michael Collison will come back into the game for the Chargers, and Dane Bacon will come in for Brady Lallman. So Bacon comes in as Hamburger's on the line. I gave a warning already. I'm having fun with that one. So Jake Hamburger now at the line is going to get that one to go off the rim. So the Broncos extend its lead to five points here at 15 to 10 against the number 25 team in the country. And now I'm totally thrown off as their number 15 has the ball for the Chargers, but there's no 15 on their roster, so I can't even tell you who that was. Looks like Corey Holloman according to my stats, but there's nothing on the roster, so... A uh, travel call there on the Chargers. And the ball will go to the Broncos. Another turnover here for Briar Cliff. And now we're going to see Shipley come into the game for the Briar Cliff Chargers here as uh, Alex Thayer going to take the ball up. Gets it to Bacon for Hamburger. Then side for Dylan Flynn. And Flynn a little too strong on that put up, but it's going to be given to Alex Thayer and a new shot clock for the Broncos. Bacon going to go far corner for Brett Wells. Wells is going to go back outside for Alex Thayer. Bacon to Hamburger. Hamburger is going to get it outside for Wells. Wells takes it into the paint, lays it up. That's going to be no good. And Briar Cliff finally will get the rebound. That's Taylor Murren getting that rebound. Murren nearly loses it. Going to get it out for Holloman. Three-pointer is good there by Holloman. I can't even give you a year. 
Because he's not he's not on our roster, Alan. What's what's the deal with this? I don't know what the deal is with that, but there was a uh, foul on that one as it was on Michael Collison. So Hamburger would be taking more free throws. And looking at our stats, he hasn't really played a whole lot. Just getting into six games this season, hasn't started, only averaging about 17 minutes per game. Yeah, he's played six games and 100 minutes on the season as Hamburger misses that first one. But yeah, kind of strange that he's not on our roster. I'm looking at the JV roster. I guess, no, that you flip it over and it's the women's roster. Never mind, so. Are you sure you got the right roster and not the women's one? No, because I've got our, okay. I've got our, I've got our players highlighted okay. here. Okay. So he hits the second one, Hamburger does, and it is 16 to 13 now here as Briar Cliff. We go across the other side. And I don't want to say the player who's on the other side for Briar Cliff because that's Maddie Murren, brother of Taylor Murren. <laughs> So uh, Mighty Murren had a good game for the women's team, women's Briarcliff team, as uh, she put up 15 points in their victory over the Hastings College Broncos. Earlier action here, and the layup by Holloman Hallam is going to be in and out. So Bacon's going to get it, give it to Hamburger. Back to Bacon for Thayer, for Bacon. Bacon's going to put up a long range, too. That's going to be nothing but air, and there's going to be a fight for it. It's going to be Holloman who gets it in his pass up for Jake Shipley. Shipley does a good job of getting the ball even though he wasn't really looking for it and then he's going to run and that ball is going to be in and out but a good offensive rebound by Michael Collison and that is going to be a foul on the putback attempt I believe Dane Bacon is who that was called on yes it was in, in fact Dane Bacon so Michael Collison 69% shooter from the free throw line this season Collison has started 11 of their now 13 games for the Chargers. And that one is going to hit off the back iron. So a lot of shots hitting off of the rims here at Lynn Farrell Arena. Just something you don't see normally here is normally a lot of the balls are going in. But uh, the first shot is going to be no good. And we're going to see John Engler come back in for the uh, Chargers. And we're going to see Zach Lena come back in for the Broncos. Both of these two teams like to get fresh legs into the game, play a lot of different people throughout. So Collison's second shot is going to be off the rim and in. So there's a more friendly rim there for uh, from Lynn Farrell Arena. That's what we're used to seeing. So Hamburger gets the pass from Bacon. Going to get it for Flynn, and his pass for Lena is going to be out of bounds on that one. So the ball will go back to the Chargers. Another turnover here in this ball game. We've, and, uh, Allen, you know, we're about halfway through here as the score is 16 to 14. About halfway through this uh, first half. Really kind of a more turnovers than you'd expect from uh, two teams getting, who are doing very well. Yeah, a little bit sloppy here in this first part of the game. A lot of turnovers. I think just trying to force too many passes, you know, ahead. And a lot of these passes are just going outside the reach of the intended receiver. And so now the ball's gonna be kicked out to Holloman, and that's gonna be off the rim and no good. Dane Bacon's gonna get the rebound. Bacon. He's gonna get it back to Dylan Flynn. Flynn's gonna give it to Alex Thayer. Thayer for Bacon. Gets it to Hamburger. And ball's gonna be thrown to Dylan Flynn, and Flynn's gonna get the ball in. Nice job there. Good assist by Jake Hamburger, and there's gonna be the first timeout of this ball game. Taken by head coach Nick Nelson of the Briarcliff University Chargers, uh, who have come all the way from Sioux City, Iowa, for this ball game. And uh, Allen Broncos doing a good job of keeping this lead. You know, it's been a very close match all the way throughout. There have been five lead changes already in this ball game, and uh, Hastings College doing a good job of just barely keeping that lead. Yeah, we saw early on Briarcliff jumped out to a five-point lead, I believe it was. Then the Broncos kind of came back. Then for a little while, it was back and forth, trading baskets. But now the Broncos have kind of pulled ahead a little bit, and they, they've been able to maintain this about three to five point lead. All right, so both teams out there now here after the 30-second timeout taken by Coach Nelson. And the Chargers going to start with it. Out just above the Mary Landing logo there between uh, between the three-point line and the half-court line. But the ball's going to get up for Collison, and they're going to call out of bounds on Dane Bacon as he had kind of been pushed out of bounds 
on that play. He was pushed out and he was trying to run back in, but he had not established himself in bounds first before he touched that ball. So the point ball will go back to the Chargers and they're going to get a fresh shot clock here at 35 seconds. And another tough roll for Briar Cliff is there. We see in number 15, Holloman gets another three pointer. And so there's going to be a blocking foul called on the Chargers. That one's going to be on John Engler. And uh, Corey Holloman is uh, not a very good three three point shooter. Hasn't really had a whole lot of attempts, though. Uh, two for nine on the season coming into this ballgame, 22%. Here not, not, not a very good sample. And I guess they are uh, waiting for the shot clock to reset there on that one. So nine minutes left in the first half. It is 18 to 17. Hastings College with a three one point lead over the Briarcliff Chargers. Thayer now is going to get it. Going to go up top for Dane Bacon. Going to go near side for Lena. Back to Hamburger to Bacon to Thayer. Flynn. Going to go for Lena. Lena looking to drive into the paint and he's going to keep the ball alive and he's going to say that the ball the ref excuse me is going to say that the ball went out of bounds just before Lena was able to get rid of it. So the ball will go to the Bradcliffe Chargers and that will allow Brady Lawman to come back into this ball game. And Alan I'm disappointed he came in for hamburger so we, we can't we can't have our bacon hamburger deluxe yet. Not yet. Not yet. I'm sure we'll see it later on. All right, so now it is the uh, Chargers with the ball. That is uh, Turner Fahey on the dribble for the Briarcliff Chargers. Fahey's going to get it to Angler. Angler's going to go to Shipley. Shipley averaging almost 20, almost uh, 18 points per game here on the season at 17.9, and they're going to say that that ball was in off of Shipley and out of bounds. So. The ball will go to the Hastings College Broncos and a good call there by the referee as he was right on top of it. A good shot there of uh, the referee who made the call on that play. So Dane Bacon's going to get it to Brady Lallman. Going to go near side for Lena. Back to Lallman. Lallman's going to go Thayer. Thayer's going to go to Bacon. Inside to Dylan Flynn. Flynn going to look for a shot, turn around, and he's going to put that one up to go. Good job there by Dylan Flynn as he now has four points on the ball game. Pretty even scoring, you know, the Broncos as a team, you know, not really one person that gets most of the points. It's usually spread out, and we've seen that so far in the first half of this game. Yeah, some of the leaders for Hastings College, you've got uh, Lawman at 15.7 points per game, Dane Bacon at 14.3, Dylan Flynn 11.2, Zach Lena 9.5, Jake Marvin 8.4, and a charge there is going to be called as it was Dylan Flynn who stood there and took it as it was Jake Shipley who will be called the foul on. Going back to what I was talking about before the play by Dylan Flynn, you got Marvin at 8.4, 7.3 for Jake Hamburger, Carson Blum with 5.1, and then really the rest of them are between two and three. So Really a lot of players spread out here for the Hastings College Broncos. A lot of players get, get touches. Now Lama's going to get it to Bacon. Going to go inside for Lena. And he's going to kick it out to Lama who gives it to Bacon, gives it to Flynn. They're on the near side. Now Blum going to go for Lama who's going to reset with 10 left on the shot clock. Lama for Flynn. Going to go near corner for Blum. Carson Blum for three points and he's going to get that one to go. Carson Bloom on that one. The freshman from Minden getting the Broncos their biggest lead of the ball game at six points here. It's 23-17. He's eight of 15 coming into this game shooting three pointers. So. And another charge is going to be called as that was Dane Bacon taking the taking the charge on that one. A great job there by the senior as we've seen a couple charges here recently on this Brackliff team and that one was on John Engler. Yeah, good job by the Bronco defense to get set and get into position. So when the Chargers are charging in, they'll take the charge. I feel like you just said charge about yeah. seven times. 
So now the ball's going to be up for Bacon and deep. Bacon from three-point land, and Hastings College extends its lead to nine points, and there's another timeout here by Coach Nick Nelson, and this Broncos team is fired up now with a three-possession lead. Man, this game is just quickly opened yeah. up for the Broncos. Broncos are on an 8-0 run as uh, at one point it was 18 to 17. And that was really after Briar Cliff had gone on a nice little run to bring it down with a one point. So a great run here by this Hastings College team. And so Briar Cliff, I'm gonna try to try to do a, a transition here. Briar Cliff from Sioux City, Iowa. You wanna know something else going on from Sioux City, Iowa? Well, I know last week, you were up at the Volleyball National Tournament watching the Lady Broncos play up there. Yeah, and I probably shouldn't be commentating this game. My throat, I don't think, is still 100% from that one, but you're close. I like where you were okay. thinking. No, that is not where we were going at with that one. The Morningside Mustangs are also from Sioux City, Iowa, and the Morningside football team, number three in the country, is in Rome, Georgia, to face the Marion University Knights, the number five team in the country, in the NAIA football championship so uh, we'll see if the g pack can bring home a national title for football the kickoff of that one is at 5 35 central time 6 35 eastern if you're out on the west coast and happen to be watching us that's uh 3 35 out there and you know what i'll just i'll just round it up it's 4 35 mountain time there you go if you're watching us from hawaii i have no idea what time it is <laughs> yeah hopefully morning psych and pull out a championship you know I commentated football as well and got to see them play the Broncos down here and it would be cool to say that I commentated a game with the national champions in it and both teams are in their first ever NAIA championship game as uh, last week Morningside knocked out the number the defending national champion and a nice over the head pass to Wells by Dylan Flynn and they're gonna call a foul out at the three-point line Roughly as there was a grab, I do believe, and they're going to call that one on Zach Odding. A great hustle play by Dylan Flynn and a nice over-the-head pass to Brett Wells, who was making a run, and all Odding could do was just grab the jersey. Yeah, I'm mean, surprised the whistle wasn't blown by the referees sooner. We saw about half of the people on the court were on the ground going after that ball, and it just ended up that... The Broncos ended up with it, and they get the ball back. And so Flynn had to uh, grab a towel, wipe off the floor there where uh, where that skirmish, <laughs> I guess if uh, you want to call it that skirmish, happened. And the Broncos inbounding now. Bacon's going to get to Lallman. Six minutes left here, first half. Broncos have a nine-point lead, and the ball's going to get up for Dane Bacon, who gets the long-range two-pointer there. It's 28-17 now. Hastings College on a 10-0 run here in this ballgame against the number 25 team in the country. So Odding's going to get in for Shipley. Gets it back to Odding. Going to go outside for Turner Fahey, and Fahey, they're going to cancel the shot on that one as there was a foul called on, I believe that was uh, called on Brady Lawman. No, they're going to call that one on Wells. 13, 15, I don't know. The hand signals look like. <laughs> Trying to read the uh, referee on that one, but just not at the right angle up here in our HD media corner. So the Chargers are inbounding here as uh, Odding's going to get it. Going to go to Turner Fahey. Corky Torres just into the ball game along with Austin Homan. Now Torres for Odding. Thought about taking the shot, but gonna get it to Torres. Torres is gonna be swatted away there. That was Dylan Flynn. And the Broncos going the other way with it. Bloom gonna go for Lowman. Lowman stops, comes back in, puts up a short jump shot, but that's gonna be off the rim and no good. Rebound goes to Brad Cliff. So now they're gonna get the ball to Holloman, who's gonna get it for Holman. Holman's shot is going to be off the rim a couple times, no good. And the Broncos going to get the ball, and a good job by Dylan Flynn to keep that ball in bounds and get it to Bloom. Now ball's going to be set up for Dane Bacon for three points, oh, and he gets that one stuck. Stuck in, the, in between the backboard and the rim. And so based on uh, the rules, that is a jump ball. And the possession arrow is going for the Hastings College Broncos, as that one was funny. <laughs> that one just stopped. 
Yeah, some, sometimes you do see the ball kind of move a little bit when it gets there, but this time it's just stuck and just sat there. Very hilarious on that one as Taylor Murren is going to come back into this ball game now for Briarcliff Chargers. He's going to come in for Turner Fahey. But with the uh, ball hitting the rim, getting stuck, Broncos going to get the ball under their, under their hoop, and uh, they're going to get a new shot clock out of it, 35 seconds. So Lena going to go with the uh, ball. He's going to give it to Brady Lallman. Going to go up top for Bloom. And then for Wells. Dane Bacon's going to get the ball. And goes for Wells. Wells, long range jumper. And that's going to be good right there. Good shot by Brett Wells. And the Broncos on a 12-0 lead now as it's 30-17. to And they're going to call Wells on a foul on that one as Wells was ready to go the other way with it. That will be the second of the ball game on Wells. Sixth team foul on Hastings College. So, so Alan, this has really been kind of a clean ball game here. There's only four minutes left in the first half. Neither team is in the bonus yet. Just a good, good game here, especially by the Hastings College Broncos. Yeah, very fast paced, very clean. Not a lot of fouls. And now a turnover here by the Chargers. And the ball's going to go to Bloom. And Carson Bloom's going to take it all the way. And the Broncos with a 14-0 run now. And that's going to be another timeout by the Briarcliff Chargers. That is the third one they have taken already. And Hastings College has not taken a single timeout yet here in this first half. And Hastings College with 15 more points than the Briarcliff Chargers on a 14-0 run. Just Yeah, Briarcliff's just been stuck at 17 for the longest time. Yeah, it's really kind of unexplainable here as Hastings College really has opened up a can of worms, really, with a 14-0 run here. And uh, I think what we've seen is we saw kind of the turning point where those couple of charges that the Broncos took. And after those, Briarcliff kind of didn't want to go back inside. They didn't want to, you know, get more offensive fouls called on them. and they've kind of abandoned the inside a little bit more than probably they should have. Yeah, they just really have not gotten very many good looks since they brought the lead down to one point. There have been five lead changes in this game, and there were three ties in that time period. Now Briar Cliff goes inside to Torres. Torres being guarded by Lena, tries to get into the paint, and he's not gonna get it. That's gonna be kind of stuffed, I guess, by uh, Lena. We got a, I guess maybe a fingertip on it. Wasn't a real clear block, but uh, it was definitely altered. So Dane Bacon gets the offense set up for Hastings College. Gonna go to the Allman, back for Bacon. Bacon inside to Lena. Lena's gonna get that one, but not quite good to go. And now the ball's gonna be off for Ricky Torres, and they're gonna call a foul. And he pointed at both Lena and Torres, so I don't know who this call is on. I believe the foul is on Lena. And the, he was pointing at the shooter. Okay, yeah, they're, they're, it's going to be one and one. Is now that's the seventh team foul on Hastings College. Lena is going to be the one who the foul was on. That's his first of the ball game. And Hastings College and uh, excuse me, Briar Cliff is going to go to the line for a chance to break this 14-0 run by the Broncos. As now Dylan Flynn is going to come into the ball game for Lena. Ricky Torres, a 6'6 sophomore from Denison, Iowa. And his first shot is going to be no good. But a good offensive rebound there as it was Odding. And his fast pass can be off the face of Austin Holman. But he's going to get the ball right back. And Odding is going to break the 14-0 run. 14-0 run, run the Hastings College was on. Now Wells for Lallman. Going to go to Dane Bacon. Going to go near side, get it to Lallman. Now Carson Bloom's going to be on the ball. He's going to go for Wells. Wells is going to go inside for Dylan Flynn. Flynn being guarded heavily by Torres. Torres going to go outside for Lohman. Lohman wants to put it up, does, and gets it to go. And the Broncos had that 15-point lead back. So 34-19 here with a little over two and a half minutes left here in the first half of this ball game between the Briarcliff Chargers and the Hastings College Broncos. Number 25 team in the country, Briarcliff. And Hastings College is receiving votes, and that turnaround jumper by Ricky Torres is going to go, and the Chargers now have 21 points here in this first half. Dane Bacon now is going to take it. He's already inside the paint. Going to kick it out for Lohman. Lohman's going to drive, and he's going to put up a short little floater. No good. He gets his own rebound and puts it back in. 
And the Broncos keep that 15 lead going. And uh, Allen, at this point, it's anything you can do, I can do better. <laughs> yeah, on that last one, just got his own rebound, one-handed rebound, and just tipped it back in. So now Odding's going to get it outside for Murren, and that's going to be no good. And the Broncos going to go the other way with it. Lawman thought about putting one up, but gets it to Carson Bloom for three, and that's going to be out the front iron. No good. Bacon nearly was able to steal the ball away from Austin Holman, but the Chargers going to go the other way with it. Taylor Murren going to go to uh, Odding. Odding's going to drive in, and he's going to get the easy layup to go there, contested by Dylan Flynn. So now the Broncos going to go the other way with it. 13 point lead here, 36 23 with a minute and a half left in this first half. So Flynn's going to take it. Flynn is going to get it, and it's going to hit off the iron, and the ball's going to go to the Chargers. So that is the first time in the last six possessions that Hastings College has not scored when the other team did, and the re that shot's going to be no good. And they are going to call a, I don't even know what they're going to call. I believe Coach Creech called a 30-second timeout. There we go. That, what a fast-paced game here as a la, six of the last eight possessions leading, in po, leading to points. And the other two possessions that didn't lead to points, the ball was off the rim of that one. Yeah, no real bad shots taken by the Broncos today. We saw in the women's game, at least at the beginning of that, there were a lot of air balls and yeah, misses that, that, in that one. And that was uh, that was an interesting ball game there by the Hastings College Lady Bronco basketball team, falling to the uh, fifth-ranked Briarcliff Chargers in that one. And Briarcliff, I sh should the women at least should move up in the next poll. They defeated number one Concordia. I believe. No, I think or, they, no, I, they, they, they fell. It was they like, fell it was by like five or so points, yeah. something like that. But still a very close game. Hamburger is going to get inside for Flynn, and that's a nice basket there as uh, Hamburger is going to get the assist on the basket to uh, Dylan Flynn. And also, we've got Brandon Krause coming into the ball game for the Broncos. He is a sophomore from Lincoln, Nebraska. Came in during that timeout. So now Collison. Going to go to Shipley. Shipley, that's going to be stuffed by Dylan Flynn. And he's going to find Jake Hamburger, but that's going to be nicely intercepted by Taylor Murren. Now the ball's going to go for Taylor, or excuse me, Turner Fahey. And they're going to get stuffed. And a travel there called on Michael Collison as right now Dylan Flynn is doing work underneath the basket. And Coach Creech gives Dylan Flynn a pat on the behind there in appreciation. Yeah, just a couple bl nice blocks in a row. And... You know, that's why Briarcliff has struggled inside, and they haven't wanted to go inside much today just because of the way that these players for the Broncos are just commanding the boards. Yeah, and Dylan Flynn came into this ballgame with four blocks. I think he's probably approaching that already here in this ballgame. So 38-23 with about 20 seconds left here in the first half of this ballgame. Kind of, kind of awkward. There's less time <laughs> on, on the, the game clock yeah. than there is on the shot clock, and the shot clock still got. That's interesting. You don't see that very often. Yeah, I'd say that's probably a mistake. So now Lena is going to go inside for Flynn, and they're going to say the ball was not tipped by the Chargers, and so now that shot clock goes off with only 6.8 seconds left here. Looking for Flynn. Flynn just kind of let it go, and ball will go to the Chargers. So we'll see if uh, we can see some. Last second magic here in this ball game. Somebody throwing up a half court shot and they're gonna call a block foul on Dylan Flynn as uh, Turner Fay, he thought maybe throwing a ball up from there might get him some free throws, but he's in the bonus anyway, so he gets a one and one shot here. And he yeah, I'm not sure a smart move to foul on that one, you know, just kind of let him take the shot. You're up by 15 points. There's no point of letting him go to the line and get some easy shots. So Turner Fahey, he will be at the line for the Chargers. He is a 64% free throw shooter, and he's going to get that first one to go. Three seconds left even here in the first half. Broncos have a 38-24 to lead over the Chargers of Briarcliff University. And Fahey's shot is going to be no good. Rebound is going to go to Lena, and a good steal by Fahey. He puts one up at the buzzer, but not going to get that one to go. A nice one-handed steal. Fahey trying to get uh, 
Maybe a little bit of magic there at halftime, maybe spark this team, Briarcliff team going into the locker room. But is not quite gonna get that one to go. So uh, now here we're gonna take a break, but we're not gonna go anywhere though, as we are gonna go to the cheerleading and dance team performances here from Lynn Farrell Arena. Don't go anywhere, don't miss this uh, pre uh, presentation here by the cheerleaders and the dance team. All right, and with that dance team performance there, we are going to now take a break from Lynn Farrell Arena. Do not go anywhere. This is Bronco Basketball on HC Media.
everyone. Welcome back to Lynn Farrell Arena. My name is Kirk Gornoff, and alongside me is Alan Hamill. And we would like to take a second to thank our proud sponsors of our HC Media broadcast. We've got Runza, uh, we've got Andy's Ice Cream, and we've got Eileen's Colossal Cookies. And we've got John Roach there. I don't, I don't know how you say his last name, I'll be honest. Uh, thanks to Eileen's Colossal Cookies since 1983, Andy's Ice Cream, and Runza with their original Runza sandwiches. So, Alan, uh, we've got the first half stats here of this ball game, and uh, we really have not seen anything too awfully different than we have normally, other than Hastings College, who was just on fire, shooting 50, 52% from the floor. Yeah, the Broncos have just taken a lot of good shots, and you know, a lot of them have been inside. We've seen a lot of inside shots, you know, allowing the pass inside and just putting the ball up. So I think that kind of pads your uh, percentage a little bit there. On the other side, Briar Cliff shooting 39%, which isn't terrible, but you know, it, they've definitely had some problems shooting inside with the Bronco defense just you know, we've seen Marvin, and we've seen um, uh, Flynn. <laughs> that, that's who I was thinking of. Those two have done a good job inside of blocking shots and taking some charges, and you know, they've kind of scared the Chargers to go inside. Yeah, and you look at the Chargers, on the season they're shooting roughly 45% or so from the floor on the season. So really not much lower than their season average. But then you look at what you were just talking about. Dylan Flynn, Zach Lena, and Jake Marvin have totaled up for five blocks for the Hastings College Broncos. Dylan Flynn with three of those. Uh, some numbers individually for this Broncos team as uh, Lallman and Bacon have led the team with eight points apiece. Dylan Flynn has six. Jake Marvin and Carson Bloom have five. Uh, Brett Wells has four, and Jake Hamburger, not to be left out in the cold, he's got uh, two points of his own. Looking at the Briarcliff Chargers, though, Corey Holloman, not even on their roster, has six points. He's a little team leader. And then you've got Turner Fahey and Zach Odding with four points apiece. Michael Collison and Ricky Torres with three apiece. Austin Holman and Taylor Murren, our star watch player for the uh, Briarcliff Chargers at two points apiece. And uh, looking at some of that stuff that we talked about in the pregame, the star wash, keys to the game, you know, you look at what the two have done. You've got Zach Lena for Hastings College. Actually, no points in the game. He's only 0 for 2 from the floor. He's got a couple rebounds, but he has four turnovers in nine minutes and 49 seconds of play. And then the star wash for Briar Cliff, Taylor Murren, with just two rebounds and two points in this ballgame. He played, he's played a little over 13 minutes, so Really, the people that we uh, we said to watch for have not been doing what what uh, it was that they were supposed to do. Yeah, Holloman kind of came out of nowhere, you know, maybe leaving him off the roster, thinking they can trick the Broncos, you know, pull him out of nowhere. But yeah, you know, the Broncos spreading the ball around quite a bit. Briar Cliff, the people we thought might do some good things for them, they've been a little bit quiet today not putting up the numbers that they'd like to expect. Yeah, and, and you, you mentioned that Jake Shipley leads the team with 17.9 points per game, shooting 44% from the field, 87.5% from the free throw line. He has attempted two shots in this game. He has made zero of them. He has zero points, zero assists, two turnovers, and a rebound for basically the number one player on this Briarcliff roster. And we saw that in our last broadcast, uh, the home game against Doan, we shut down their top score too. He didn't score in the first half either and put ended up with, I believe, eight points in the second half. So the Broncos are finding, they're going into the game plan with the plan of isolating each team's best player. And it seemed to have worked so far. Absolutely, and you don't, you don't shut down a person who's uh nationally ranked in scoring as uh, Jake Shipley is 25th in the country in his total scoring coming into this game with 197 total points. 
And uh, Des, that might go down a little bit. Yeah, and Shipley was also named GPAC Player of the Year last year and has been named to the all-conference first team the past two seasons. So the Broncos is doing a great job of shutting him down. And, you know, we haven't said his name hardly at all. No, we have not. All right, and with that, we are going to take another short break. We'll be back in a minute here from Lynn Farrell Arena. Don't go anywhere. This is Bronco Basketball on HC Media. Welcome back to Lynn Farrell Arena. My name is Kirk Ornoff, and alongside me is Alan Hamill for this GPAC basketball game between the 25th ranked Briarcliff Chargers and the receiving votes Hastings College Broncos. And uh, Alan, let's talk. Let's talk about some other other Hastings College sports. Uh, you got wrestling that is uh, going today. They uh, really had a tough beginning of their season as they lost. One of their senior wrestlers, Brad Cusadis, who went to the national tournament each of the last two years, lost a uh, close duel on Tuesday night uh, to Benedictine 24-22. That's got to be uh, something rough, rough there to deal with. Yeah. Whenever you lose a player like that and lose anyone in such a horrific accident, uh, that's just def devastating to your team. You know, they played a close match with Benedictine the other night and I think this wrestling team they'll get it together as the season goes along absolutely and then we'll switch to the other uh, real winners uh, I guess there's two more winter sports indoor track hasn't hasn't really done anything yet but the women's game you know they, they are receiving votes they have kind of slid down the uh, national rankings the last few weeks it just has not done what was really expected of it. Yeah, and I think it's, you know, the GPAC's a very tough conference to play in. You know, Coach Hofstetter in her first season here, you know, there's gonna be some adjustments to be made. I, you know, she's bringing in a different style of play that than what we've seen in the past here with the Broncos. So I think there's an adjustment lag there. You know, I think, a, though that the Broncos will end up being probably towards the middle part of the conference. Yeah, last season the team finished fifth overall in the conference. Actually won its first round game at Briarcliff last year before falling to Concordia in the second round of the GPAC tournament. Uh, and then, Alan, I guess I guess we've got to go back a little bit. Let's go, let's go back to the fall sports, the last one that just finished. You were talking about it a little bit ago uh, in the pregame. The Hastings College volleyball team went on to the national tournament, advanced out of pool play in a very exciting tiebreak match uh, with the Embry-Riddle Eagles. Went on to single elimination where it won its first game. It was a quarterfinal play-in game. There were 12 teams left, so four teams got a bye. They won that one four, three to one uh, before falling to the number one team in the country, the Concordia Eagles from Calif Irvine, California. And Allen, just a great season by the Hastings College volleyball team. Yeah, great season. You know, kind of came out of nowhere. I know you like to think that they would go all the way from the beginning of the season. Actually, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you my reasoning for that. Last season, under two graduate assistants, this team was tied for first in the conference getting towards the end of October, which, you know, the regular season play ends first week of November. 
So you take a regular coach, somebody who can implement their offense, give them the spring to work on that, and then give them two weeks before the season starts to work on what it was that they had done, and you had a team that was tough to tough to compete with. Yeah, and Coach Bartermore just did a wonderful job of, as you mentioned, you know, bringing a team that already had the pieces in place and just getting the job done. All right, so this game's back on, and our first shot is going to be taken by Taylor Murren, who's going to miss that one. So the Broncos will go the other way with it. The five on the court right now for the Broncos. You got Carson Bloom, Zach Lena, Dylan Flynn, who just took that shot, made it right there, 40 to 23, 40 to 24 now, excuse me. Getting that one. Uh, you got Brady Lallman and Dane Bacon finishing it up there for the Broncos. For the Chargers, you've got Taylor Murren, John Engler, Jake Shipley, Michael Collison, and whoever's got the ball right now. That is Turner Fahey. So the same five starters for both teams out there for the start of the second half. So looking for somewhere, Murren is going to get it to Collison, going to go for Engler, and there's going to be a foul called on the play. Going to give a couple of free throws as that one is on Carson Bloom. So in, in that first half, sorry about that, Alan. Uh, in the fine. first half, Briar Cliff was just three of seven from the charity stripe as the uh, first one is going to be off the front iron. Bounce, 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 and in. So a point there for the Bradcliffe Chargers. They get their first point at the second half. And we kind of mentioned this before the game, only shooting 69% from the free throw line coming into this game. So Bradcliffe, not one of your better free throw shooting teams. And so um, John Engler gets that ball, gets both free throws in as uh, now the ball's going to be in for Dylan Flynn. That's going to be off the iron and no good. Ball's going to go to the uh, Briarcliff Chargers. Jake Shipley is on it right now. Going to go to Turner Fahey. Inside to Michael Collison. Back out for Jake Shipley. Shipley looking for a screen. Not going to get it as Collison kind of backed up to try to get the ball inside. And now John Engler's with it to Turner Fahey. For Shipley. Thought about it, but uh, decided against it with Dane Bacon right in his face. And now he's going to take a turnaround, and that's a nice shot there by Jake Shipley, the leading scorer for this Briarcliff team, his first points of the ball game. And now Brady Lallman thought about it, but he's going to take it inside, and he's going to get swatted there as that was Michael Collison on that one. And Michael Collison is third in the country. That is his 30th block on the season. Definitely a big presence in there for the uh, Chargers at 6 foot 10 inches. Now Fahey, going to go across, going to take it inside of the paint, going to go far corner for Ta uh, Taylor Murray, and that's going to be off the iron, no good, rebound to Carson Bloom, and then that one's punched out by John Engler, out of bounds, Pull, uh, ball will go back to the Hastings College Broncos, but Allen, let's go back to those keys of the game that we talked about in the pregame and how they turned out in that first half. Keep the ball outside was our first one for the Broncos. The Broncos were 57.1% from three-point land in the first half. Four of seven. Briarcliff, they were three of nine. 33% for the Chargers on that one. Chargers free throw game. Hastings College only had four free throws in that one. Uh, but they kept Briarcliff to only seven, uh, seven free throws in the first half as uh, they were three of seven in that one. And then uh, the, our third key to the game, win the first half, Hastings College. I would say they won it going into the locker room at 38-24. I would agree with that. All right, so Carson Bloom will be the one now shooting a couple free throws here as the foul was called on Turner Fahey, and he hits the first one there. It's 41-28 now. And the point of keeping it outside, you know, maybe not forcing Briarcliff to shoot threes, but they kept them out of the paint, and I think that's the, the big thing right there is keeping Briarcliff out of the paint. So the second one by Carson Bloom is going to go doink, doink, doink and go in. So another friendly rim here at Lynn Farrell Arena and it's 42-28 now. So now Jake Shipley going to give the ball to Engler. Going to go back for Collison to Engler. Or excuse me, that's uh, Shipley. Shipley looking for somewhere to go and they're going to throw the ball off of Jake Marvin as he was kind of being pushed out of bounds. A nice play there uh, by Shipley, the senior. 
a 6'8 senior guard from uh, State Center, Iowa. I I Alan, you're from Iowa. I'm just going to take a random guess. State Center, Iowa is near the center of the state. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm from Colorado, so I, yeah. I, I don't know Iowa towns very well. Yep, it's pretty much in the center of the state. Okay. So that is a uh, layup there. That was Angler on that one. He's got four points now in the ballgame. So Brett Wells is going to go to Dane Bacon. Marvin now on the inside, battling with Collison. Gets it out for Bacon. Bacon for three. No good. That one's off the front iron. Marvin almost got to it, but uh, he punched it right to Jake Shipley, who's going to go the other way with it. 42 to 30 is our score here in this ballgame. 16 and a half minutes left here in this one. Now Murren's going to go outside for Turner Fahey. Fahey for three. That one's going to be no good. Brady Lallman with the rebound. Bacon going to go to try to go to Brett Wells, but a nice job there by Angler reading the one-touch pass. So now the Chargers trailing by 12, trying to get a little bit more in this one, and uh, he's going to put up an awkward-looking shot there. But uh, the foul on Brady Lawman, whatever, is going to get you two shots, right? Yeah, you can definitely tell Briar Cliff is being a lot more aggressive to start this second half, trying to climb back into this ball game. So 42-30 here again, and uh, Jake Shipley will be the one who goes to the free throw line for Briar Cliff. He is an 87.5% free throw shooter coming into this ball game. And he. Hits the first one, 42-31 now is our score. In that first half, Shipley did not go to the line, so that was just his first attempt here. So Odding will come, is the uh, one who came into the ball game for Angler, and Shipley hits the second one. So 42-32 to is our score here in the second half of this basketball game between the Hastings College Broncos and the Bradcliffe University Chargers. Marvin thought about it, but he's going to go far side to Brady Lawman. To Bacon. To Marvin. Near side for Brett Wells. And now to Jake Marvin, who's going to get into the paint. Going to dish this one out to Lawman. Lawman thought about it, but Shipley was there. Now going to get it out to Marvin for three, and he's going to hit that one. Boom goes the dynamite for Jake Marvin, and it's now a 45 32 ball game here in the second half. The Chargers trying to make a comeback, but Jake Marvin hitting that one from downtown, and he just kind of killed the momentum for the Chargers. And that is the second three-pointer of the ball game for Jake Marvin, as the foul call is on, said Marvin, as uh, right now Hastings College, three players on the court that have eight points right now, Lawman, DeBacon, and Marvin, and then you've got uh, Alex Thayer out there, uh, just came out there. Carson Bloom with seven. So a lot of Broncos are getting baskets here in this ballgame. Now Fahey. Trying to drive it in, but he is going to be hand-checked there. Going to be the foul that is on Alex Thayer. That is already the fourth team foul for Hastings College. Kind of a different second half. second half. You know, the first half, we didn't see a lot of fouls, you know. I think we were down to four minutes left in the half before either team got into the bonus. I think it was even less than that. And those double dribbles gonna be called on that one as that was Zach Odding, uh, who is gonna be called on. So 45-32 is the score here as uh, we see Hamburger come in for Lohman. So Brett Wells is the inbounder. He's gonna get it to Alex Thayer. Thayer taking it out. Gets across half court. Bacon now for Hamburger. Gonna go inside for Marvin. Marvin, and there's gonna be a foul called on Ricky Torres on that one. As a good lob pass over the top to Marvin, and Marvin, or excuse me, Torres pushed Marvin in the back. On that one is uh, Marvin with a uh, little bit of a height advantage. On that one, he's 6'8", Ricky Torres is 6'6", six, six, and the ball is going to go into Marvin, but he's not going to be able to hit that short-range jumper, and the ball will go the other way. Fahey going the other way, and Marvin with the SWAT! The Broncos have definitely brought the SWAT team to this game here, as Marvin going to get another block. Ball going back to the Chargers, though. And it's kind of interesting. We kind of thought coming into this game that Briar Cliff might have more of a height advantage, 
but obviously not the case there as Jake Shipley hits a three-pointer. So Marvin now has the ball. He's going to go to Brett Wells. Going to go now back for Marvin. Marvin's going to try driving now and gets it to Bacon. Bacon to Hamburger. Hamburger got that one to go. And there's your Bacon Hamburger special of the night as Bacon dished the ball off to Hamburger, gets that one, and it's 48 to 35 now. It's Brightcliffe going the other way. That is uh, Holman who's got the ball. Going to go outside to Jake Shipley. Shipley now. Mid-range jumper is going to be off the rim a couple times before being rebounded by Hamburger. Now Hamburger for Bacon. Bacon on the inside. There we go. I am enjoying every bit of this as that was a Hamburger Bacon special. You've been waiting all game for this, haven't you? <laughs> yes, I really have been. So 50 to 35 now is the score. And Shipley's going to turn it over. Now here's Wells. Wells takes it in, and he's going to get it to go, and he's going to get fouled on that play. A great job by Brett Wells. Sticking with that one. And they're going to count that basket. That's a foul on. Uh, I did not see who that was called on. I believe that's on Turner Fahey. And the Broncos now with all of the momentum right now. Yeah, just getting that nice steal, passing it up ahead and getting the bucket and the foul going for the three-point play here. I was really hope Wells would throw it down, I'll be honest. <laughs> so Wells on the free throw, that's good. So they're gonna get three points the hard way and it's 53-35 right now. And there's gonna be a timeout called on the Briarcliff Chargers. So Hastings College led by Dane Bacon and Jake Hamburger have taken this game over here as they now lead by 18 points with 13 and a half minutes left in the second half here. And Allen, that's basically exactly what we expected. Yeah, the Broncos, you know, we said coming into this, whoever wins the first half is gonna do a good job and it's continued into the second half. You know, the Chargers haven't really been able to do anything to come back in the second half. The Broncos keep extending their lead and they have the momentum and it doesn't look like they're going to stop anytime soon. And at, that, and at this point, if you're Coach Nick Nelson, you're just trying to limit the damage. You want to take the ball down and you want to get baskets. It doesn't matter if it's a two point, it doesn't matter if it's a three point, it doesn't matter if you give up baskets yet. I say yet yeah, because we still have 13 and a half minutes left, but you really have got to get baskets. Something that you haven't even matched Hastings College's first half output yet. Yeah, Briarcliff, you know, they've struggled to score. And like you said, you know, probably need to limit the damage as much as they can. If a, with a loss, that would probably drop them out of the top 25 rankings. And, you know, it definitely hurts the, your G Pack standing as well. As we uh, fumble around our paper yeah. trying to find it. Um, oh, there it is. It's yeah, right, right in right, front right, of us. Right in the middle. So Torres going to get it inside for Holloman, and Holloman's going to get that one to go. Holloman getting his first action here in the second half. Uh, about six and a half minutes in now. The ball's going to be getting to Brett Wells, and Wells going to take it and get it to go. Brett Wells with another lay-in and, and one situation here. Gets that Broncos lead back to 18, and he can extend it to 19 here. So Brett Wells, who has nine points here in this ball game, trying to make it 10. Gonna get that one to go. There's the friendly rims of Lynn Farrell Arena that we've been looking for here in this ball game. So now uh, Murren is gonna lose that ball, and now the ball's gonna throw it up to Hamburger. Hamburger to Thayer. Thayer back to Hamburger for three. No, not gonna get that one to go, but it's gonna be rebounded to the Bradcliffe Chargers. Odding gonna go for Holman. Holman looking inside, does not, he goes to Holloman. Holloman for Murren. And they're gonna go inside to Holman. That's gonna be off the rim and no good. Bronco's gonna get the rebound out of that one. And Dane Bacon does a good job not getting his head taken off. Now Hamburger for Bacon. 
No, off the front rim, and Marvin's gonna get the rebound and put one up, but he's not gonna get that one to go as he was kind of falling backwards on that one. So now Murren gonna put up a three-pointer. No. And the rebound's gonna be tipped out, and they're gonna go Broncos basketball as Holman and Odding were the ones going for it for Hastings College, and I believe Brett Wells was the one fighting for it for the Broncos. Now a couple substitutions here as we will see Dylan Flynn and Brady Lallman come into the ball game now for Hastings College as we see Wells and Bacon come out. But don't worry, before Bacon went out we had a, a couple, I guess at this point we're at, we're at dinner time here, dinner specials there from Berlin Farrell Arena and Brady Lallman Hits that three-pointer there, giving the Broncos a 22-point lead here at 59 to 37. So here we go, ball's gonna be given inside to Torres. Torres being guarded by Flynn, and they're gonna call a foul there. As uh, I guess he kind of went up. It looked like he maybe pump faked, went up for a jump pass, really. I don't think he meant to shoot it, but he's gonna get uh, a couple shots out of that one anyway. Yeah, drew the foul, get a couple shots, hope that he can get him in. So Ricky Torres will be the one shooting the free throws now. He has three points in this ball game. And he's not gonna get that one to go. So first free throw is no good by the sophomore. Second shot by Torres is good. And it's 59 to 38 here. 11.45 to go here from Lynn Farrell Arena. Hastings College with a 21 point lead here over the Briarcliff Chargers. If you missed anything early, it was actually a really even match early on as it was 18 to 17 at one point. Then Hastings College went on a 14 0 run, and Zach Lena is going to get the basket there to extend this lead to 23. Now the ball's gonna be thrown up by Fahey, and Fahey's gonna get the three-pointer to go, and it's now down to within 20. He now has seven points in this ball game. Thayer. Gets it to Hamburger, gets it back to Thayer. Alex Thayer trying to set something up. Gets it to Lena, who just goes right back to Thayer. Now the ball's gonna be set up for Lohman. Thought about it, but instead he's gonna drive, get it to Thayer. Thayer's gonna put up a three-pointer and that's no good. And the Bronx is gonna fight for the offensive rebound, but Torres is gonna wind up with it. Fahey now gonna go to Angler, and, or excuse me, that's Murren, and Murren with a nice lay-in underneath the basket there. And they have cut this lead down to 18, 61-43. Yeah, Murren just kind of threw the ball behind them and got a nice layup there. Still the Broncos controlling the game. It looks like they're trying to slow it down a little bit on offense, trying to run out some more clock. And the ball's gonna be off the hands of Hamburger going out of bounds. There as uh, Holloman was right there. Causing the ball to go off the hand. And uh, now we're gonna see Michael Collison come into this ball game for Briar Cliff. Nearly said match there. For those who don't know, I commentate Bronco Volleyball. So a lot of what I say, I'm trying to hold up because I've, I, uh, twice I've nearly said where well, this is Bronco Volleyball on HC Media. <laughs> I've held off with that one. Uh, and then also, I was about to say he came into the match. This is definitely a game. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm trying to adjust here. Luckily I haven't, haven't uh, done anything like I did at the Tyson Event Center last year when I said <laughs> that we were at Lynn Farrell Arena. That, I caught myself before fully saying arena. So Jake Shipley is on the free throw here for the Chargers and he hits the first one. Shipley now with eight points in this ball game. All of those here in the second half as Hastings College lead down to 17 right now. Yeah, and Shipley's kind of started to get things going here in the second half, but it's probably gonna be a little bit too little too late. Shipley was just 0 for 2 in the first half. No free three pointers attempted, no free throws attempted. He now has nine points in this ball game after hitting both of those. So 61-45 is our score. But I think if Briarcliff is gonna come back, it's gonna have to be through Jake Shipley. Him and Collison are, Collison's gonna have to step up on defense. One of the uh, leading blockers 
in the NAIA. So now Dylan Flynn trying to find a spot. He's going to find Jake Hamburger in the far corner. That's going to be off the rim and no good. So the charge is going to go the other way with it. Holloman is going to try to find a room in, but no, he's guarded by Wells. Going to get it to Murren. Now outside for um, Holloman. Fajita Collison for Shipley. And Shipley thought about going to Fahey, but he's going to drive inside. Now go to Holloman. Holloman for three. That's going to be off the front iron. Rebound to Jake Hamburger. Now Lawman's going to go to Wells. Back to Lawman. A good pump fake. Gets Shipley out of his way, and he's going to put up the long range jumper and get it to go. And now the lead is up to 63 to 45 here with nine minutes left in this ball game. And Alan, you mentioned it, this is a lot slower pace than we saw in the first half. Yeah, I think the Broncos trying to slow things down a little bit, especially when they're on offense. Briarcliff still trying to uh, keep it a little bit more up tempo so they can try and get back in this game. But it, and, and they really need to with as much as they're down with as little time as there is left. Yeah, yeah. just 9-0-1 left in this ball game. So there's not a whole lot of time for them to work back into this with the score being 63-45. And Briar Cliff, you know, they've kind of, when they've played good teams, they've had some struggles. They, they played two games where the team that they played was currently ranked and one game where the team moved up into the rankings after that game. And then their two games against ranked teams, they lost to then 19 William Penn, 78-72. William Penn has since climbed to number six. They also lost to then number seven, Northwestern, 94-93 in overtime. Northwestern's dropped a couple spots down to number nine. And then Barcliffe has also lost to Doan, who was unranked at the time. They lost that game 83-73. But since then, Doan has moved up to number 14. So, you know, Briarcliff, I think, when they play good teams, they kind of lose something. You know, they've done well against teams that have been subpar, but when they, when it comes to playing some better teams, you know, they've struggled a little bit. Yeah, and this Briarcliff team has put up a lot of points. You mentioned the 93 points put up against Northwestern. They've put up 100 points against Our Lady of the Lake. Yes, that is an actual college. Our Lady of the Lake, they're located in Texas. Uh, 94 points against Waldorf College in Iowa. And then 84 points, they've done that a couple times, and then an 86 point performance against AIB from Iowa. So, you know, this team puts up a lot of points, just not doing so here tonight. Collison now, looking for somebody he finds, Odding on the outside. Odding goes to go to Murren. Murren's gonna go back to Odding. He's gonna drive in, get it to Collison, and Collison's gonna put that one up and in. Just a mismatch there as the 6'10 Collison was up against the 6'4 Brett Wells. Now Marvin goes underneath and underneath the basket, he's gonna get that one to go, a nice little move there by Jake Marvin, and Marvin now has 10 points in this ball game. He is the third Hastings College Bronco to reach that mark. So now Odding's gonna get it that, his left-handed layup to roll. And it's now 65-49. Now Marvin for three points again and off the rim. And no good, rebound's gonna go to Murren. So now it gets to Fahey. Fahey, that one is gonna be off of Alex Thayer and out of bounds. So the Chargers will retain possession of it. But uh, Allen, right now, I almost called you Ross. We talked about my <laughs> volleyball stuff. I almost called you Ross right there. But Allen, right now, Briarcliff is doing exactly what I said they needed to be doing. And that's just worrying about their possessions and getting points. Yeah, you know, they've sort of kept the tempo up on their side, you know, not worrying as much on the defensive side, just trying to get as many points as they can, and hopefully they can work back that way. And Holloman's shot is no good, but they are going to call a foul on Michael Collison. And that one going for the rebound, and Collison once again with that height advantage, even over Jake Marvin of the Hastings College Broncos. Jake Marvin, six foot eight. Broncos just don't have the height that they have had in years past with Don players like Donovan Schultz and then even going back to my freshman year and a nice under to Jake Hamburger, Jake to Jake on that one. 
And that is a 67-49 lead now. Two points for Hastings College and Hamburger will try to make it three. So Jake Hamburger will shoot his that free throw and that's gonna be off the rim and in. So a nice friendly roll there for him. Hamburger though came into this match. The center right there, he came into this ball game. A 73.7% shooter, he's doing very well in this ball game here today. Audie does a good job getting it to fight. Um, yeah, Fahey. That ball's gonna be set up for Murren. Murren's three-pointer is gonna be off the front rim and he's gonna get his own rebound. Ball's now out to Holloman and Holloman's gonna get that three-pointer to go. A nice basket there, three points. And it's 68 to 52 now. So Brady Lallman on the basketball. Number 15, Lallman's being guarded by number 15, Holloman. They now get it to Dane Bacon. Now for Carson Bloom. And then back to Hamburger. Hamburger thought about it, but he's gonna instead pass the ball off. Now Bacon with it to Lallman. Back to Bacon. Marvin with five on the shot clock puts it up and that is gonna be a holding call on Michael Collison. And that is Collison's third of this ball game. That is the seventh team foul for the Briarcliff Chargers. Now Hastings College has entered into the bonus. So every time they are fouled, they will get at least one free throw. Jake Marvin with uh, 10 points here on the ball game. He's gonna hit that first one, allowing him to get a second shot. Marvin, a 66.7% free throw shooter coming into this ball game. So I guess two out of every three is good for the senior. Yeah, and Marvin doesn't take a whole lot of free throws. Only 10 of 15 coming into this game. Which, which is kind of surprising considering he is an inside the, yeah, post player. Basically the big man for Hastings College. He and Flynn kind of split time there and Dylan Flynn Kind of really hasn't had a whole lot more opportunities than Marvin, but he still has a decent amount. So 70 to 52 here, six and a half minutes left to play from Lynn Farrell Arena. Ball's gonna be getting in for Torres, and Torres is gonna be stopped by Marvin. And the Broncos are going to win the ball back. Now the ball's set up for Lohman. Lohman has Hamburger with him, and he's gonna drive that one no good. And no foul called on either player. Now Fe uh, Fahey, for three-pointer, gonna get that one to go. And his lead down to 15 points here at 70 to 55. Now Bloom, gonna drive it inside. No, gonna get his own rebound, and he's gonna be fouled, trying to get the second ball up there to go. So we will have now free throws coming for Hastings College. So Carson Bloom is a 63.6% free throw shooter coming into this ball game. And his first free throw is gonna be in and out. He gets two of them though being fouled on the free throw attempt, or field goal <laughs> attempt, whichever, I don't know. It's been a long semester. So now Bloom's second shot is gonna go up and in, and it is now 71 to 55. I'd like to see what a foul on a free throw would look like. <laughs> I think that would be called a, considered a loose ball foul because I don't think the person shooting the free throw would be fouled and Shipley's three pointer is gonna be no good. Holloman is gonna get that rebound. They get it inside now to Torres. Torres looking for something against Marvin, not gonna find it, gets it out to Holloman and Holloman's three pointer is gonna go. A nice shot there by Holloman. And it's 71 to 58 now. Holloman up to 14 points on the game. He's been a good, doing a good job from outside, hitting a lot of those threes, trying to pull the Chargers back into this ball game. And Dane Bacon gonna get that one to go. A nice run in there by the senior from Kearney, Nebraska. So now Fahey gonna go to Torres, and Torres is gonna be fouled on that one. Jake Marvin is gonna be the guilty party. That is Marvin's third, and that is the seventh team foul on the Broncos, which means now both teams have officially entered into the bonus. I believe it was Lowman on the foul. Oh yeah, they are calling that on him. I thought it was uh, Marvin who was right there on top of it, but I didn't even think Lowman was in the area. That's weird. But Torres knocks down his first free throw. 
73-59 now is the uh, score here. And gets that one up. And that one is good. So both free throws by Torres is good. And now we're Allen, we're starting to see some of our keys to the game play a factor here as keep the ball outside. We've seen a lot of three-pointers from both teams here, really, uh, doing that. And then the Chargers free throw game. The Chargers have a lot more free throws here in the second half, and that has kind of kept them into this ball game. Now Bacon going to drive inside and get that one to go. Here, and it's now 75 to 60. Bronx lead now by 15. And then I got our third key to the game was win the first half. Hastings College with a big 38-24 lead. 14-point advantage after that first half. And a three-pointer by Brady Lallman going to go. And it's 78 to 60 now. As uh, that 14-point halftime lead has really kind of kept steady here in the second half. Yeah, we've seen it fluctuate a little bit, but it's kind of stayed about the same throughout the second half. And Fahey's three-pointer no good, and Lallman does a great job of getting that rebound to Carson Bloom, who's going to take it the other way now. Gets it to Lallman. Lallman back to Bloom. He's going to slow it down, go back to Lallman. Assistant coach at the bottom of your screen, Jeremiah Slough. Okay, no longer at the bottom of your screen. Getting the offense set up for Hastings College. Now Dane Bacon has it. Lawman driving inside. I'm going to go to Hamburger, and Hamburger does a good job keeping the ball. Five to shoot now. Lawman going to have to put something up, puts a uh, kind of a runner off, hits the rim, and the ball was nearly out of bounds by the uh, Briarcliff Chargers. And so now here we go. The ball's going to be rebounded to Jake Marvin. And Carson Bloom's going to get the rebound. And a timeout will be called on the play. That one is going to be called by the Hastings College Broncos. That will be the uh, third timeout that they have taken here in this second half, I do believe. It is a full timeout here for Hastings College. And uh, Allen, since we're kind of running out of stuff to talk about with uh, 3.43 left here in the second half, uh, something else going on today. We've, we've talked about uh, the Sioux City, the football team. For Morningside going on to the national championship game. Let's keep a little football thing going here. Who do you have in your Heisman watch here today? Well, I, I know who you want, but. Yeah, we're, we're not going to talk about but, you. We're talking about you right now. Um, Let's keep it with you. I got to go with Texas A&M's Johnny Manziel. You know, just doing a good job. You know, Texas A&M moving to the SEC, kind of a different type. You know, going from the Big 12 to the SEC is quite a change for a program, and he's done just a good job with that offense. Yeah, I myself am a little biased on that one. And uh, what happened was uh, I went to Loveland High School in Loveland, Colorado. I uh, graduated in 09, and... The year before me, a certain Colin Klein graduated from Loveland High School, so that was 2008. So uh, my first really two and a half years of uh, high school football, Colin Klein was our quarterback. He kind of came in a little bit my, my freshman year um, as uh, you know our starting quarterback kind of got hurt for a couple games. Um, but really, I am too biased really to answer with anything other than Colin Klein for the Heisman there. I, I, it, it's kind of like our uh, broadcast in the NAI volleyball tournament where a nice move there by Dylan Flynn to get that one to go. Broncos lead now by 20 again, 80 to 60. Kind of like the Broncos volleyball team. We were basically told we couldn't go up to broadcast them, but I was so blinded by my own bias <laughs> that I just couldn't believe it. So I'm kind of the same way when it comes to the uh, the Heisman vote later, which will be announced later tonight. So Fahey going to go in, and that was going to be in and out Great there shot, on that shot. So... Uh, Broncos now going to take the ball the other way. Leading by 20 now with three three minutes left here in this ballgame. Lawman's going to get it for Dylan Flynn. Flynn's going to go inside, working on Torres. To uh, nice spinner, turnaround. Going to get that one to go. And Aces College leads now 82-60. to 60. And Allen, you know, we mentioned this is probably going to be a high-scoring game with the way these two teams have played coming into this game. But uh, really, uh, only one team has played like we expected it. Shabazz me set up for Holloman, and Holloman's going to get a three-pointer there. 
at now making it 82 to 63. Yeah, Briar Cliff averaging 82 points a game, and that's what the Broncos are at right now. Hastings averaging 77 points a game. And a good ball into Lawman, and Lawman is going to be fouled on that play. Briar Cliff is was the one who was fouled. Sorry Briar Cliff that. is well below their season average. Yeah, and looking at their full schedule on the season, the lowest amount of points that they have scored in a game was 71 uh, when they played Nebraska Wesleyan back on the 28th. I believe that was last Tuesday. Does that sound, that sound right? We're going to go with it. The 28th? Oh, last Wednesday. Last Wednesday. All yeah. right. Because that was the day that we played Doan, okay. I believe. Yeah, so. see, I was, I was going off of the 29th and the 30th, which is what the volleyball tournament was, but I had my days confused. So we're going to see some mass subs come in here for the Briarcliff Chargers as we're going to see Mike Newton come into the ball game for his first action for Briarcliff. We're also going to see uh, Kale White, uh, Wheatfield, at least I think that's Whitefeld, uh, come in. And uh, we are also going to see uh, one more come in as I believe it is uh, Austin Holman come in now. And Hastings College also going to bring in some fresh players as we're going to now see Brandon Krause, uh, Aaron Reyes, uh, Matthew Nelson, and Dylan Flynn is the other one out there. So both free throws good there. 84 to 63 is the score now here in this ball game, and that shot's going to be no good. Rebounded by Dylan Flynn. It's now Lawman going to get it to Reyes. Reyes is going to go to Nelson. Nelson. Kind of deflected, but Cross is going to be able to uh, retain it anyway. Cross is going to bring it in, lay it up. That one's going to be no good. And the rebound is going to go to Austin Holman, one of the few players, really, who has uh, kind of stayed in this ball game here amongst the substitutions. And so now we're going to see the final two, Really, the final people who have stayed in for most of it come out as Lohman and Flynn will both come out of this ball game. And we're going to see um, Andrew Pryor come in as well for Hastings College. So that first free throw there by Austin Homan is good. Austin Homan went to Lamar's Community High School. I actually know him. So played for the Bulldogs up in Lamar's, the ice cream capital of the world. Uh, it's Blue Bunny, right? Correct. Okay. I've, I've been to before, uh, Lamar's many times. Many times I've been to Lamar's, Iowa. I've got family in Minnesota, so we've we've uh, driven through there on our trips up there. So now the ball's going to be given to Andrew Pryor, who's going to get it to Reyes, and that shot's going to be no good here. So now Evan Watkins is going to bring it in for the Chargers. He's going to get it here once again from Homan. Now they're going to get it to Kale Wheatfeld. And Homan's got it again, get it back for Watkins. Watkins looking for something inside, and his pass for Mike Newton is going to be out of bounds. And I got to give nice hands to, uh, Dan to our, our, our co sports director here. Actually, in our final game of being the uh, HCTV6 sports directors. So uh, congratulations to us on that one. That's me and Dan. And he just gave us a thumbs up there. I don't even think he knows that he was, where he's being talked about right now. So a minute left here from Lynn Farrell Arena. Hastings College with an 84 to 65 lead. And that foul will be called on Matt Berg of the Briarcliff Chargers. And this one. So uh, Brandon Krause will be the one who shoots the uh, free throws here for Hastings College. Kraus is uh, two for two on the season in free throws and make that three for three. He's, he's perfect. The, he, yeah, he's the best Hastings College free throw shooter out there at a thousand percent. Of course, he's only three for three, so that's where that's where we're getting that. Kraus coming in now. His second one's good, so he's going to stay perfect on the season at least up until he may, might get fouled again. I don't know. I can't predict the future. And now the ball's going to be set up for Matt Berg, and that's going to be no good. And the ball's now set up for. Um, Kale Wetfield, Wheatfield, Wheatfeld. That's weird. I'm sorry. I'm butchering that last name. My apologies if the uh, Wheatfeld family is watching, or Wetfeld, or Wheatfield. I don't know. If 
I'm sure at some point I'm going to hit that last name right. So Reyes is going to get it to Kale Anderson. Anderson actually looks a lot like Chuck Ferguson. It's kind of kind of interesting. Like not, like physically looks just like Charles Ferguson. So now Watkins going to drive it in and there's going to be a blocking foul. That one's going to be called on Kale Anderson and that is going to be in the double bonus now for the Chargers. Or excuse me, no. I was looking at the wrong team's fouls. That was the ninth foul on the Broncos, so it's still just one and one here as uh, Watkins going to go up to the line here for the Chargers. Evan Watkins is attempting his first free throw of the season and he hits it. So now he's perfect. Yes, he is perfect now. Evan Watkins coming into the season with just six total points. And uh, that is his first of this game. So he now has seven and he's going to miss that free throw. So now 15 seconds left. Kale Anderson's got the ball. He's going to cross over half court. And at this point, Hastings College has just got to hold on to it. Krause is going to drive it in. He's going to lay it up, and he's going to put that one in. A nice layup there by the sophomore, Brandon Krause. He's a 6'2 guard slash forward from Lincoln, and that's going to be the final basket of the ball game as Hastings College goes on to win this one, 88-69. to And Allen really not anything like we expected here in this ballgame. Yeah, I, we both thought coming into this game that this was going to be a lot closer. Barcliff number 25 coming into this ballgame. Hastings just outside of the top 25 receiving votes. We figured this would be a fairly close game. You know, their numbers matched up. Hastings averaging 77 points a game, Barcliff 82. You know, we figured it would be probably upper 70s, low 80s, kind of sort of in there. And and when we were talking back at the back at our Grace Center building, we were almost thinking maybe 90 points could be scored in this ballgame tonight, and it was almost. Scored. Yeah, almost, 88, just one basket away. So the Broncos really have to be proud of this win, being able to put up 88 points against the Charger team that, you know, isn't bad at all. The Chargers, though, you know, they've got to be a little bit disappointed driving all the way down from Sioux City to get beat by a much larger margin than they would have wanted to. Yeah, a 19-point victory for the Hastings College Broncos. Very impressive here at 88-69. We're going to take a break here from Lynn Farrell Arena. Don't go anywhere. This is Bronco Basketball on HC Media. Farrell Arena where the Hastings College Broncos just got done defeating the Briarcliff University Chargers by a final score of 88 to 69. I'm Alan Hamill. Alongside me is Kirk Orndorff. We just got done calling this ball game. We're going to take a look at some final stats in a little bit when we get those for you. But just a impressive win today by the Broncos getting the 88 to 69 victory over number 25 ranked Briar Cliff. And, and Allen, early on there were five lead changes in this ball game. But then once the Broncos got that fifth lead change, I believe it made it 10 to nine. They just let, they just let Briar Cliff stay in the rearview mirror. Yeah, I think the closest the Briar Cliff got after that was 18 to 17, I believe. Yep. And then after yep. that, you know, Briar Cliff was stuck at 17 for probably almost 10 minutes. Yeah, and, and after that one that made it 18 17, the Broncos went on a 14 0 run to give themselves a 15 point lead. And that's really where that Broncos lead kind of, kind of say, give or take a few points. You know, I don't think they got it ever down to within 
12, 13 points. But this Hastings College team just stepped on the gas pedal. And uh, I guess there's a new song that's just kind of come out. Uh, Full Throttle is the, is the name of the song. And that's the only way they know. Which is another line in the song. All right, so we're still waiting for uh, stats to come up to us here in this ball game. Um, but Alan, you look at let's let's look at the day overall for both the women's and men's basketball teams here. Uh, Hastings College women came out, didn't really have the greatest performance in their ball game, and you know the men kind of came out and just stuck it to the men. Yeah, the women's game, you know, actually in the first half, the Lady Broncos did a pretty good job. But I think part of that was, you know, Briar Cliff was just a little bit sloppy. They weren't into the game as much. You know, the Broncos took a three-point lead in the halftime. But, you know, coming out in the second half, the Chargers just kind of exploded in that second half and got a pretty easy victory. Absolutely. And then the Hastings College came out and took vengeance against the uh, the men's team and you know you don't win a game by 19 points and go into your bench unless you're playing really well and Hastings College in this match in this ball game was playing pretty well. Yeah they were kind of clicking on all cylinders today we saw you know on defense uh, Flynn and uh, Marvin and Lena inside getting some key blocks you know, taking some charges, which kind of, you know, put a damper on Briar Cliff's attempt to get an, any sort of an inside game going. And then on offense, you know, spreading the ball around. We've seen that all season from this Bronco team, and we see it, saw it again in this ball game, and just doing a good job of getting the ball to multiple people. You know, you never know where the next points are going to come from, and I think that throws a lot of teams off. Absolutely, and you mentioned this Broncos team was on fire. First half, they shot 51.6% from the floor. That increased in the second half. The Broncos shot 54.8% from the floor in the second half, 53.2% overall in this ballgame. Briar Cliff, they shot right on their season average for the second half at 44.8%, uh, giving them a 42.3% uh, uh, shooting in the uh, second half, and Hastings College Really kind of what we talked about. They kept Briarcliff away from the free throw line. Hey, Briarcliff, only 21 free throw attempts. They averaged 26 per game, uh, whereas Hastings College only averages 16 given up. So they met right in the middle. That, that's, that's, that's kind of an interesting place to meet there. Hastings College went to the charity stripe 17 times. They hit 14 of those free throws. That's where you're going to win your ball games. Yeah, and we've seen this team coming into this game uh, they rank number seven in division NAIA Division Two in free throw percentage, I believe. So, you know, the, just doing a good job of when they get to the line of making the free throws and making those points count. And they really didn't do a bad job shooting uh, from the free throw line. They were 71.4 percent from the line. Their average, their season average is actually 69 percent. So they actually went up from their season average. But when you got Hastings College, who takes almost as many free throws as you do. They shot 82.4% from the line. Just, just great numbers put up today. And the Broncos were 12 of 13 from the free throw line in that second half, 92.3%. Individual numbers, we're just gonna start with the visiting Briarcliff Chargers. Uh, Corey Holloman led the way for Briarcliff with 14 points. He also had five rebounds added onto that. Uh, then Turner Fahey with 13 points. Our star watch in the game, Taylor Murren, only had four points, four rebounds, took five three-pointers and hit zero of them. Uh, keep going on for uh, some of the numbers. Jake Shipley, the leading scorer for the uh, Chargers on the season, only had nine points in this ball game. He was two for seven from the floor. Which that's half of what he averages. Averages almost 18 almost points eight, a game. Exactly, almost so 18. So his point total was cut in half in this ball game. And then behind him, Ricky Torres and Zach Odding had six points apiece. Uh, Murren, John Angler, and um, Austin Holman had four points apiece. And then Kale, oh, I'm gonna butcher this again. Kale Wheatfeld had three points as well. For Hastings College, the Hastings College Broncos had five 
FIVE, five players in double figures in this ball game. Brady Lawman led the way with 18 points. Second right behind him was Dane Bacon with 14. Dylan Flynn and Jake Marvin had 12 points apiece. And Brett Wells added 10 for Hastings College. Behind them, Jake Hamburger and Carson Blum had eight points apiece. And then Brandon Krause, welcome to the Welcome to the big leagues. He had four points in this ballgame. Zach Lena, our Star Watch player, only took one shot in the second half. He made it. That was his only make of the ballgame. He had two points, two rebounds. So we really picked the wrong players to watch for in this ballgame. Yeah, we did. Uh, not really sure what happened, why that didn't work out for us. But, you know, uh, you know, I, it's not that big of a deal. You know, I guess it shows that other people stepped up for the Broncos today did a good job. This is a team that likes to spread the ball around, spread the scoring around. And, you know, I think we really saw that today. And I guess what that means is the game is not played on paper. We should not look at stats with while choosing. Yeah. We should. And I stayed up late getting all my stats done and look how that worked out for yeah. me. Yeah. Well, that's going to do it here for, for this game from Lynn Farrell Arena. Uh, the next ball game that these two teams will play, uh, Briar Cliff on Tuesday will play AIB College from Iowa. And on uh, the 15th, so next Saturday, the Broncos will travel to Orange City, Iowa to face the Northwestern Red Raiders. Both of those games will be at 4 o'clock p.m. Hey, uh, Briar Cliff will be at home for their game. Our next broadcast will not be until January 12th when Hastings College plays the Dakota Wesleyan Tigers. Uh, up until that point, they have, uh, let me count real quick while I'm talking, I have seven games between now and our next broadcast. So it uh, should definitely be interesting to see how things are different then than they will be now. With the win, Hastings College moves to four and two in conference, 11 and two overall. They have now won two in a row. And Briarcliff falls to three and three in conference, nine and four overall. And their four game winning streak has come to an end. For Alan Hamill and the rest of our broadcast crew here for today, my name is Kirk Ornoff. Thank you for joining us.